Welcome to another episode of Outdoor Boys YouTube channel and it's finally cooled down enough where I can stand to be outside foraging. And uh, I'm excited, I've had all summer to think about what I want to do and we've got some great projects planned this winter. And for those of you who follow my channel pretty religiously, you might have noticed that I got a new forge stand. So let me show you the new forge stand. I've got upside down aluminum diamond plate on the surface. Um, aluminum won't rust obviously and it'll prevent uh, it from burning when hot coals fall out. And then I've got the joints notched. And so you can see here where I inserted uh, the pieces together, made it a lot stronger, used exterior deck screws instead of nails, which is you know another real basic thing. Um, and then I've got lots of these cross members here. The old design, I had a shelf on the bottom, which I thought I'd use for storage. I, I never used it, and the lack of cross support just made it really wobbly, uh, especially over time, the more I used it. This one is really rock solid. Hopefully this will work a lot better. I'm really excited to give it a go. So right here, you can see I've got the shop vac blowing air into a perforated tube with a bunch of pea gravel in it. And this is the basic forge um, that I've been using for the last number of years. If you wanna see a video on how to build this, I'll put a link in the description. But for my first forging project of the year, I've got something special planned for you guys. I am going to turn this old pickaxe into a double bitted battle ax. <laughs> hoping to make more progress before it was time to quit for the day but uh, it is what it is I'm a little bit slower a little bit more out of shape than I was uh, at the beginning of the summer but uh, we'll uh, go ahead and put this up for right now and pick it up just a little bit what we really need to do is start working on this edge pounding the metal here along this side to, to gradually draw it out so that it's uh, beginnings of an edge and then I need to shape this profile but we'll kind of see how it goes here you go little guy you having fun with daddy yeah. Well that turned out pretty darn well. I'm happy with what I got so far, but the real challenge is about to begin because I've got to stick this part in the forge and hold it by this part. And then if I bend it down, it's gonna be awfully close. I, I may not be able to do this without burning my hands. I may need to invest in a pair of welder's gloves. My sweet children gave me their cold. 
And uh, I'm gonna try to do some forging today and finish up the, the second half of this pickaxe. But we'll see how it goes. I'm kind of tired and snotty. shape done and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out but there's definitely some things I would do differently let me show you remember how I used that angle grinder to groove the the pickaxe I did that to encourage it to fold in a specific location but it didn't really work and in the end it caused this ugly little, little defect in there but it's not structural it's you know just superficial I thought it would close up when bending and the other side did but this one didn't and I just it just wasn't worth it. Well, I was really worried about getting everything symmetrical and it actually turned out pretty well. The one problem I had is when I first folded the second part of the pickaxe, I, it, it bent half an inch further from the eye than the other side did. And so I had to correct for that and that was a lot of work. And in the end, it caused this point to be about a little less than a half of an inch shorter. But, um, I fixed it all except for this part and I'll just use the angle grinder to even that up. Alright guys, now it's time to bust out the angle grinder, put an edge on this thing, clean it up a little bit, and even the two tines out. Alright, gotta save that little piece for later. That'll be important. I don't know what type of steel this is. Unless you know what type of steel you're working with, you don't know how to properly heat treat it. What you should quench it in, whether or not you need to anneal it, what temperature you need to get it at. Each steel uh, and each alloy is different. So, um, you know, it's just kind of hitting in the dark. So that's where this little extra piece of steel comes in. I think I need to water quench this, uh, this project. If I'm wrong, it'll make it too brittle. So I'm gonna test it out on this little tiny piece here. And if this little piece shatters after I water quench it, then I know I probably need to oil quench. Well, we got the fire roaring hot, but a little too hot. It was like burning my forehead just to even mess with stuff with the tongs. So I spread it out, turned off the fan, let it cool down a bit because I want a nice gentle fire for the heat treating process. Don't want to burn the edges, melt anything. And I am going to start by taking this little bit of steel in there. We're going to heat it up. We're going to water quench it and see what happens. It did shatter after I hit it about six times with the four pound sledge. So pretty tough, not too brittle, but I, I think I'm gonna want to anneal it. So this is probably somewhere around 1060, 1070-ish steel. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna water quench it and then bake it in the oven for a while to soften it up a bit. Well, getting the whole axe head consistently heated was a real 
challenge. I had to make a horseshoe shaped bed of coals and really tend it and tweak it to get it cherry red as evenly as possible. To anneal the ax head, I'm gonna put it in the oven at 450 degrees for about an hour. Um, so we'll see how that goes. And it uh, looks like my lovely wife has made pasta for dinner. Thank you, babe. Welcome. All right, well, you we ended up baking this thing in the oven for about an hour and a half, and I don't see any cracks or warps. And uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and knock the slag off it, polish it up a little bit, put an edge on it. quite shave with it sharp, but uh, pretty darn good. The way these pickaxe eyes are made, they're designed so that you feed the handle from the bottom down instead of from the bottom up like you would an ax handle. Um, so what it means is the handle has to be smaller than the bottom of the eye, which is approximately two inches by three inches. and. Uh, then what you make is at the top of the handle, you make it flare out uh, so that it jams in here and doesn't feed all the way through the eye. So far, so good. But uh, we'll pick this up again tomorrow. It's a crisp fall morning. We're gonna keep working on this ax handle. I'm gonna grind out the head and uh, just kinda clean up the head a little bit and uh, let's get going. <laughs> curious how much this thing weighs. That is eight pounds. <laughs> oh, that is beastly. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, you could absolutely do some damage with it. Um, it's kind of a goofy design and just kind of a fun, fun thing. So I have no idea how effective of an actual ax this is. So we better go find out. Let's go chop some crap. All right guys, let me give you a little bit of a close up here. Good looking little ax. Well, I have some serious questions about the functionality of this ax, but you gotta admit, it looks awesome. Okay, maybe it's not so bad. Whew. Whew. Well, that is a lot of work. <laughs> Do I think this is a very utilitarian battle axe? No. Was it a lot of fun to make and swing? Yes. 
<laughs> well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and I hope the takeaway from this is that this is easy to do. You don't need a lot of equipment. You don't need years of practice. To just try something, you know, go out there and try blacksmithing, try making axes and restoring stuff. It's fun and you don't have to impress anyone other than yourself. So enjoy yourself, enjoy these videos. And remember we put out new videos every Saturday morning and we have a whole playlist dedicated to forging and tool restoration videos. I'll put a link in the description. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to click subscribe. Have a great day. Oh.